Nomad makes. All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're building the inner structure of this guy, and that means mortise and tenons. So let's get right down to this. So it's finally time to cut the parts for the web frame. This is like a, a mix of Fusion 360 and uh, hand notes. So I'll be cutting the, the stretchers here, the lower and the upper stretchers. Luckily, I milled up extra stock when I was doing the milling, so I have enough for this. This is my Gunway marking wheel. I find it indispensable when working with white oak to help tear out. The coarse adjustment is on the nut on the back and then you can fine adjust it and finally lock it with a small lever. The rails and styles of the inner frames will have shaker style floating panels in them. And here I cut the grooves in the panels with my 6mm grooving blade. Right, here we go again. In my humble but honest opinion, the most important safety feature on a table or cabinet saw is a quick change riving knife. This is because it makes a change between riving knife and blade guard a breeze. This is a real time swap and the saws that I know come with this feature is the Laguna Fusion F3 and the European version of the DeWalt DWE 7485. If you know more saws that have this fantastic feature, please pitch it in the comments below. So the height in between the upland lower rails here is 290. Now, luckily I had a presence of mind to make like a story stick or several story sticks, but this is 290. So it doesn't really matter if it's exactly 290, but for this project, everything that is marked as 290 is this length. A small challenge when doing mortises on the table saw is that you need the length between the shoulders to be exact. My solution to this is a strip a bit thinner than the shoulders as a good stop block. These are quite shallow mortises, so one pass over the 6mm grooving blade is enough. So I was umming and oing about how to join the inner frames to the front and back stretchers. I tried double tenons, wedged through tenons, and I even considered pocket holes, which would be perfect in this application to be honest, but I just couldn't make myself do it, as all other joints in this build are mortise and tenon types type joints. I also considered a payload through tenon, but I figured it would weaken the stretcher and take away from the clean look of the front. So blind mortises or stop dados it is. I brought my CMT7E router out from the router table. I don't really like to do that, but we had to. I made a separate video on some issues I had doing this with a cheap, low quality router. The Triton is doing a guest appearance in the right side up configuration here. Honestly, these cuts would have been easier to do before I cut the arches, but you know, you live and learn. So these are the upper stretchers and the stop dados.
And these are the lower stretchers with blind mortises. Now, there's a lot of back and forth on the interwebs about the use of miter saws. Some say you don't need them at all, and some swear by the Festool and can live without that other kidney. I get by with my cheapo Metabo here, and use a zero clearance board, and lock the slider when I need good accuracy. This way you don't need lasers, blade shadows, use the force, or a prophecy to make an accurate cut. I am a big proponent of using relative dimensioning and this is the 150mm Bocco combination square and it is great for just that. I have several of these in my shop, that way I can kind of store, if you know, more than one measurement. Listening to podcasts while I work is something that I really enjoy. This is the American Craftsman podcast by the guys over at Green Street Joinery. I really enjoy their content, and if you go check them out, let them know I sent you. To get somebody to pay for that, it, it's going to eat up. Let's say somebody's budget is $5,000 and they want a table. But you start introducing mortise and tenon, actual mortise and tenon yeah, into it, the then you can't do this part, you can't do this part, and this part. I tried out four different pull saws in this build. Since this video got a little bit long by YouTube standards, my next video will be a comparison with, uh, between all the four saws. Here you will see three of them, starting out with the Luna 265 pull saw. Thank you. 
the teeth on this has a tiny flare to them and as you see here I damaged the edge of the cosmetic shoulder a bit. Hydrate or die, isn't that what the Camelback commercial said? This is my handy little Paul Seller style pocket knife. One of the knife I use the most. And believe it or not, the original blade is still on this one. I just give it a few swipes on the rough diamond plate when needed and then carry on. Here is another pool saw. This is a Gyokuchi. The set of the teeth are a lot finer, but the de depth of cut on this one is quite restricted. A quick knife wall since the cosmetic shoulder is so shallow here and the next saw is a bit coarse again This is the Laguna Tenon 350 and again stay tuned for the full look at these saws and one more in my next video. She bought a six pack of Bex. Hmm. I didn't really like it. Yeah, it's like a pill. Like a This top data was a bit loose and if you want to know why, check out my last video about cheap routers. The 
So there it is, the lower frame. And the dry fit of the inner frames and stretchers. And here we have a more up-to-date clip with the floating panels pre-finished. But more about that in upcoming videos. Here you see the dovetail drawer boxes. These will get inset white oak fake fronts on them as well. But again, that is it for today, guys. I would like to thank my first ever patron, Mongus Islam. He has a great Instagram profile, so go check him out. And join us over at Patreon, should you want to support me as well. I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. You'll find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.